Okay, just for a, as a quick uh, overview on the Great Barrier Reef, and I'd like to run through uh, where fishing sits in the in the days and the day-to-day uh, -day management of the Great Barrier Reef, and I'll give you a snapshot of what what it means when we say the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. It's a Commonwealth managed park from low water out to um, the blue blue border that you can see. It's it has complementary zoning from the states along, so the, the the people in the park don't need to know which side of the state the three mile limit they're standing on. So the zones match up. Um, it's um, it's a big area, and you can see some of the stats there, and um, a lot of islands. I think the point to realise about the reef is that there's a lot of um, the coral reef pictures you see in the tourist brochures are these shallow water blobs, but there's a lot of deep water, a lot of um, different uses of the marine park. There's a major shipping channel that finds its way down there, which is hard to believe when you look at how narrow it is and shallow. Uh, and um, I'll say a bit about shipping briefly. The, the industry uses of the, of the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park are, are uh, valuable to the economy of Queensland and Australia. The biggest component of that $5 billion per annum in revenue to industry is tourism. Uh, and it would be 80 something percent of that. There's fishing, there's shipping, uh, there's fishing, commercial, wreck and indigenous. The tourism is, is it's a bit like talking about mining. There is no sort of single aspect of tourism. There's day visitors, island resorts, what we call long range rovers, liverboard dive tours, charter fishing, bareboat charters, super yachts, cruise ships. Um, there's, so it's a diverse group of itself. Um, shipping, has, you'll see, has risen up the risk assessments uh, since that coal carrier parked on Douglas Shoals last Easter. So um, that's been interesting and a lot of interest from the fishing industry and what we're doing to stop them parking on the reef as well. Recreation and scientific research and defence. The Senate estimate seems to be all about um, uh, why are we permitting uh, the defence to bomb Shoalwater Bay lately. I've had a lot of questions on that. Um, again, we'll, we'll move along quickly. Um, I want to talk about the Outlook report as, the, as underpinning uh, the sustainable fishing in the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. The Outlook report is part of our legislation as of a couple of years ago and I know from um, David Borthwick that it got its name from when I was talking, giving evidence to his inquiry, I said what we need is something like what ABEAR used to do for the I forgot that it was still running. Uh, the Outlook reports that every year they'd sort of say where's gold going or mining or fishing and uh, the reef really needs that because it's like the IPCC until they started saying where you'll go if you keep behaving like this. You know, state of environment's a static, has been in the past a static thing. Looking forward is the way to go and if you don't like where you're headed do something now to change course uh, and that's the basis of the Outlook report. The risks that were identified, it's essentially a risk assessment for the Great Barrier Reef. And I'm giving you this context uh, because if you'd asked a member of the public maybe 10 years ago what's the greatest risk to the Barrier Reef, they'd probably say trawling or some fishing activity. And that's changed in the last uh, five to six years. So climate change effects weren't on the radar. Um, I, I don't think they probably featured in the early BRS fishery status reports. I don't know if they do now, but I would be surprised if there was an element. Uh, for the Barrier Reef, climate change is a huge issue and subject of another seminar, but coral bleaching, acid water, changes in motion current movements, uh, etc. Catchment runoff, water quality, and this is the first point where we have a lot in common with the fishing industry. Um, a, a resilient reef has clean water and, and a healthy ecosystem. Coastal developments, now, come to the nub of fishing, the, we've called it the residual or the remaining impacts of fishing, illegal fishing and poaching. Um, there's been a heck of a lot of reform in the Great Barrier Reef in the last 10 to 15 years in the fishing business. Uh, the trawl plan, the, the line plan, um, the aquaculture regs, and th things, that, things have changed in that area. And, and uh, shipping and pollution have sort of snuck onto the radar, whereas they weren't there probably a little while ago. Um, what are the strategies we use to raise the resilience of the uh, Great Barrier Reef? And um, that did come up, I think, in some of the talks just before as well. Um, is, um, there's the spatial management of what's allowed. The Marine Park Act is, is a quite a broad act and its goal is the long-term protection, ecological, sustainable use of the Great Barrier Reef. And, and then the functions under there by a whole range of mechanisms. The zoning plan, we have other, other uh, action plans for climate change adaptation, of which the fishing industry is a partner. 
the reef water quality protection. We're, we're focusing now on strengthening coastal management through partnerships with Queensland, proving shipping safety, uh, working with AMSA, and reducing the remaining risks of shipping. And I'll outline our role in that. Um, fishing in the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park has, has been a fundamental and appropriate use of what is a multiple use marine park uh, since well before my agency was created. It's an important pastime, source of income for the Queensland coastal communities and um, all of the fishing activities rely on there being a healthy resilient system and um, we've been doing our best to uh, sort of uh, not, not demonise, I think there was a hint of demonising the industry there maybe 10 or 15 years ago and um, we want to see a sustainable fishing activity in the marine park for all the reasons those different sectors pursue it. Um, just a, a sense of the scale of fishing uh, by world standards or austral fishery standards may not be huge. <laughs> Sorry, Martin. Um, but there's a few tonnes there. There's a few recreational fish there, William. Um, and, um, and you can see that um, th there's a broad range of, there's no single fishery in the Barrier Reef Marine Park. Um, I'll come back to how that's managed in a second. It's mostly w delivered through Queensland, Fisheries Queensland and our part. Th they take responsibility through an intergovernmental agreement for the day-to-day -day management of fisheries. Um, just um, an ad for the Outlook report, and to give you a sense, we, we've done a, a um, you need a, a set of binoculars to read the actual numbers there, but you can, like any, uh, you've got a likelihood and consequences, like any risk assessment. Things that are up in the top red area are things like sea temperature in increases, ocean acidification.